Let's rank some stuff. Right. We've got a tier list of all of the periods of Destiny, basically. All of the main game releases, DLC releases, season releases, full expansion releases, every period of Destiny. So you've got obviously Destiny 1 and 2. You've got the expansions. You've got Age of Triumph, which was seasons. You've got these seasons here, full expansions. So we're going to rank every season. This is probably going to be kind of controversial because I don't think any two people will agree on this at all because I'm sure some of you will have been around since Destiny 1. Some of you would have joined around Destiny 2 somewhere or maybe one of the recent seasons. Some of you probably skipped out on certain seasons or expansions. Some of you probably have played the entire way like myself. I've played every single season here. Obviously some more than others. There's a couple things you can think about. You can think about the quality of the content, how well Bungie did. Some are way better than others. Curse of Cyrus looking at you. <laughs> you can look at like the general community enjoyment. I'm very aware of which expansions people liked and which people didn't. And I want to know what your guys' opinions are as well. Again, everyone's going to have a different opinion on this stuff. And you can also just rank general, like the general kind of uh, tone of the game at the time and relative to how much they cost. I mean, I'm not even sure the price of all these things. Yeah, I think it should be a pretty interesting, an interesting one to rank. Let's see how this goes. And also, if you're feeling generous today, clicking the like button down below would be much appreciated. We'll rank everything off of initial opinion now, and then we'll go back at the end and we'll make some adjustments. So if you see something in a place that you don't disagree with, I might change it towards the end. So don't get angry at me just yet. <laughs> Starting off with Destiny 1, the full release original game, Vanilla 2014. So I want to preserve the S tier. I don't want to make it too, uh, I don't want to just chuck everything in the S tier, but I'm feeling I'm going to put this in A tier, Destiny 1 release, because I mean, it's, I almost want to put an S tier though. It did have a bit of a rocky launch. There were some issues at launch, but all things considered, for the first of its time, Destiny is one of the most unique games of all time. I think it's safe to say that they did an amazing job with the release of the game and considering how little content there was and the story, a lot of criticisms about the story. Destiny 1, I feel like it's got to be in the A tier. I'm leaning on possibly S tier, but I think A tier for now. Dark Below Expansion. This is an interesting one. If you ask a Bungie employee, one of like the worst periods of Destiny because they had to make it in I think like six weeks. That was like probably the worst crunch of Bungie. They, they had to rush this expansion like crazy. They really had to at last minute. Again, considering how good it was, I can remember what it was like when it came out. It was massive hype. Thing is though, besides the raid, there really wasn't that much. There was like three real missions. Two of them are kind of filler and just kind of fetch this. I mean, in some ways it's very reminiscent of Curse of Osiris because it was very rushed and very quick, but how much time Bungie actually had to make it, considering how, much, how little time they had, they did do a pretty good job. I'm going to put Crotar in or Dark Blow in B tier because it was pretty high at the time. House of Wolves, I'm not going to lie. This was, even though it didn't have a raid and that was a huge shock, it still was possibly, in a lot of people's opinions, one of the best eras of Destiny. It was so, so good. Uh, even with Prisoner of Elders, the Trials of Osiris came out with this expansion. So House of Wolves was a pretty huge point for Destiny. I'm going to put that in A tier, slightly above, start below. Taken King, I don't think it's too much of a decision. This is easily S tier. This is one of the best expansions of Destiny and one of the best expansions of all time of the entire franchise. And also what it did for the game, because it was obviously Destiny 1 released with a bit rocky. Considering how much this like saved and transformed the game, Taken and King, it was, I think, in many people's opinion, one of the best eras of the entire game. It was such a good expansion. Such a good expansion. I think it's got to be an S tier. You can probably guess which other expansions might end up in S tier, but Taken King is very, very, very solid. Now, Rise of Iron was a really good expansion. Again, it was kind of rushed. Destiny 2 was supposed to come out in this year, but they pushed it back a year and made up Rise of Iron out of thin air. So Rise of Iron was kind of like a, not last minute, but it wasn't the original plan. And that's why it's obviously the Plague Lands. It was very much like, what are we going to do? We need more time to make Destiny 2, so we need to make another expansion. But Rise of Iron, Rise of Iron was very good. And again, Year 3 was a very, very good time for Destiny. I mean, it's tough to compare like full game releases to expansions. And obviously some of these, like these are like, what, $10, $15? Whereas Rise of Iron was like, I think 30. Taken King was like 40. And obviously Destiny game is what, like 60. Rise of Iron, oh yeah, Wrath the Machine. Hmm. Wrath of Machine. Yeah, I think Rise of Iron is going to put A tier. That was also a very good expansion. Considering kind of it wasn't their initial intention, I think everything that Rise of Iron had, yeah, I think it's A tier. Age of Triumph. Age of Triumph. This might be a controversial one, but I think I'm going to put Age of Triumph in S tier. I'm not sure if that's controversial. Genuinely, Age of Triumph was one of the best periods of Destiny full stop. But considering what they did, the way they were able to repurpose old content and they made it so much more polished and relevant and some of the best armor sets in Destiny history. Again, like I'm not trying to say that Age of Triumph is better
better or on the same tier of Taken King. But thinking about the effort Bungie put into it and the amount of enjoyment that came from it. And again, I was there. I remember the tone. Like everyone loved Age of Triumph. And there's some PvE stuff in there as well. A lot of story stuff, like the story with the Vault of Glass. They added some Easter eggs in there. I believe they dropped the Destiny 2 trailer during the Crota raid, the remade Crota raid. I remember watching the Destiny 2 trailer and they, they revealed, which was obviously massive hype. They've been building up to it for so long to finally get the Destiny 2 trailer. They did that during this season. So it was a very good period. Age of Triumph, yeah. A lot of people are very, very fond on memories of that. I think that also puts it into that category. Considering this is a free update, just to kind of hold us over until Destiny 2, I think that also justifies it being S tier. We'll do the rest of them and we'll see how it looks at the end. And then maybe I might change my mind or something. Yeah, the April update was Age of Triumph the year before. That isn't here, but the April update, I would also rank very highly. That was a very, very good expansion. That was with uh, Malok. Now, Destiny 2, the full game. Now, this is an interesting one, and this is going to be very controversial. Again, some people would put this in D tier. Some people would put it maybe A or S tier. I mean, I think if you're talking about the launch, again, I made a whole video about this, literally detailing what Destiny 2 was like in 2017, how much it changed and how much of a different game it was back then. The Destiny 2 launch, I'm probably going to put it in B tier. Great game. Like it still had so much, so many improvements, so much quality stuff, but it, it really did launch very rough. So the game itself, obviously now I'd rank it higher because they've they've come a long way. One of my favorite periods of Destiny, but still I do remember community wise, critic wise, it kind of was like repeating Destiny 1's mistakes. It, it launched in a very weird place, but yeah, Destiny 2, I'm probably thinking B tier. The campaign was very good. Crucible was, yeah, it was simple, but yeah, it wasn't. <sighs> Yeah, it's a weird one. But Destiny 2 at launch, I'd probably put a bit lower than Destiny 1 at launch. So I think that's how we're looking. Curse of Osiris. What were some of the best parts about Curse of Osiris? Yeah, I'm just going to put it in going to put it in D tier. There's no beating around the bush. <laughs> yeah, Curse of Osiris. And I remember going to Bungie Studios when it launched and like I spoke to developers and like a lot of higher up people. The tone was very much like we know this isn't our best offering, but you got to just kind of stick with it. It's the best we got. Like, but Bungie were very aware that Curse of Osiris, like, I mean, as I said, Destiny 2 launched in a very rough state and Curse of Osiris was made in like the sum before Destiny 2 came out. So they didn't have time to adjust the ship and Curse of Osiris was just like another kind of bit of Destiny 2 launch. It, it wasn't, they, they hadn't had time to implement the changes they wanted to. So yeah, Curse of Osiris had good lore. That might be possibly, and Panoptes looked good. Panoptes is a very cool looking boss, but I don't think it can, it can be ranked much higher than that. Warmind, this might be kind of strange, but Warmind, I'm honestly going to put in A tier. Warmind was a very, very good expansion. Again, content wise, didn't have a ton. That was when they really doubled down on the secrets, the Easter eggs. They Mars was a very fleshed out location. Warmind was, they had the whole uh, Rasputin puzzles. Warmind was really the beginning of them starting to turn it around because obviously they had a lot of time to implement the changes the community wanted. But I do remember Warmind was a very good time for Destiny 2. Warmind was solid. Even though, again, and they hadn't had the budget and the this wasn't a big expansion which is coming next for what it was it was miles better than curse of osiris but warmind i'm standing by that was a very very good expansion the whisper mission as well yeah you're right Ikelos shotty escalation protocol it was just fun yeah, it was just fun again like you can't compare it to a full expansion which had like massive amounts of budget behind it considering what it was by these days it'd probably be considered kind of like a season except with a new uh location of mars obviously but mars was a very good location and zol the strike boss not chris yeah warmind was solid now, Forsaken, this was the actual turning point of Destiny, and this is easily going in the S tier, right next to Taken King as one of the best periods of Destiny full stop. Again, Forsaken is the Taken King of Destiny 2, transformed the game, fixed everything that was wrong with it at launch, completely overhauled the game. Forsaken is, again, if you ask most people, they would tell you the Forsaken or Taken King were the two uh, best periods of Destiny. But Forsaken was such a good expansion. It had two entire locations, the Tangled Shore and the Dreaming City. City. The Tangled Shore was just like this campaign location, which was sick in itself. And the Dreaming City, possibly one of the best destinations Bungie have ever made. And the Riven Raid, um, Last Wish, possibly one of the best raids of all time. I don't, I don't think it's a very hard decision to say that Forsaken was just like one of the crowning points. The story, and then obviously the amount of sandbox fixes, the Crucible fixes, the TTK, the exotics. Forsaken is like, yeah, I don't think you'll find anyone that will uh, speak negatively of Forsaken. Black Armory. Black Armory I actually quite enjoyed. I did enjoy it, like Black Armory quite a lot. This is a season. This is where we're going to get into season territory. These aren't even expansions. The forges. Going off of loot specifically, the loot in Black Armory was top tier. I've got like all the best god rolls, which obviously now sunset, which is unfortunate, but my blast furnace, I love that gun so much. Iznagi's Burden, the Jotun, the Le Monarch. Black Armory, I'm going to put. Again, considering what it is, considering it's a season and the amount of loot it had, 
I'm going to put it in A tier. I can already feel people disagreeing with me here. I'm just kind of trying to put off of how the community reacted to it, the quality and the replayability of it. Were the expectations met? Because I remember every single trailer release. I remember every single kind of hype period. I remember the, the feeling of wh whether it lived up to the uh, expectations or not. And Black Armory was one of those just like a solid, solid expansion, a solid season. Great follow up to uh, Forsaken. And obviously it was still in that Forsaken era. So the game just felt very good. So Black Armory was a, was, it was a great leg up. Joker's Wild season of the Gambit. This is probably one of the seasons I played the least i wasn't really a massive fan of this expansion some people might like it i'm probably going to put this in c tier the first for the c tier category a season of opulence i think if you ask a lot of people this possibly one of the best seasons ever especially with the uh, menagerie considering again it's a season this probably did better for the game than a lot of expansions did season of opulence i'm probably going to put in a tier as far as replayability as far as adding to the game this added a lot to the game so season of opulence i'd put in a tier i'd say shadow keep this is where things get interesting shadow keep you've got the garden of salvation raid you got the beginning of the darkness you got the pyramids but it also was the beginning of the the fomo the limited time events i think i'm putting it in b tier solid it was solid it was definitely underwhelming for a lot of people i think a lot of people would rank shadow keep a lot lower probably in c tier but again this was just after they split from activision and again this is another one of those kind of i'll give bungie a bit more credit because they'd lost the extra studios they have with activision they they had to start using a bunch of their studio to now do what Activision used to do, the publishing side of things. So Shadowkeep, Bungie was in a very, very rough point. They were stretched very thin for Shadowkeep. And obviously, because it's a reskinned moon, um, that's why it isn't like a ton of ton of new content. I'd give Bungie a bit more leeway because they were going through the massive transformation and reorganizing their entire studio and having lost a ton of developers that made an expansion so, as good as uh, Forsaken. It was the first expansion they made without Activision's help, which... Again, as a player, players don't really care about this kind of stuff. They're just like, I just want to play the game. I'll pay my money, which is fair enough. Like, obviously, as customers, you're entitled to your opinion. But understanding more of the developer side of things, I understand that Bungie had a very tough job making the expansion, and they did this with no help, having to reformat their entire their entire organization. So I give Bungie a bit of credit for it. And, you know, had the uh, Pit of Heresy dungeon, uh, Garden Raid. The final boss fight mechanic is a little bit weird, but the Garden Salvation is still a very solid raid. And, of course, Introduce the Pyramid it's very vaguely though but shadow keep a low b i reckon undying this was the season that came alongside shadow keep i'm probably gonna put this in d tier this was and, and again bungie has admitted this many times that they didn't really know how to strike the cadence between what should be in a season alongside an expansion because they put all their work into shadow keep season of the undying there was basically nothing there was what the what was that horde mode they had which was pretty decent but yeah, the vex offensive the undying mind boss was just one of the most random things i've ever seen in destiny they Akora spent like however many months building this giant portal in um the tower that ended up doing absolutely nothing <laughs> it was yeah seize the undying was very random like the the visual effect of the vex spawning on the moon was cool but seize the undying i think it's pretty fair to say it, it, it was a very weak uh season bungie had put all of their effort into shadow keep the expansions so the season was just kind of like just kind of there um and the way it ended like story wise was very weak season of dawn this story wise was really impressive this i'm probably gonna put in b tier and this was the beginning of the sundial saint 14 came back the perfect paradox yeah this is a very very good season very impressive some of the best missions this is where the story of destiny really started to take off and bungie really started to understand how to put the story into the seasons a lot more than they had previously and the story started taking over dawn i think i'd rank very highly i remember playing that a lot grinding out sundial dawn i very much enjoyed season of the worthy i actually enjoyed this quite a lot what happened with this this was the beginning of the the giant screen where the pyramids were coming in it was very this was the introduction of war mine cells war mine cells that was a pretty good addition to destiny i'm gonna put season of the worthy in i'll put it in beta I, I remember playing this but this uh season quite a lot and again now we're in like season territories so not really expansions although technically speaking if you compare the content of some of these seasons to the content you got out of house of walls dark below or even things like curse of osiris they're actually pretty comparable like the seasons now the destiny community expects a lot more content the content we get these days and seasons is actually kind of comparable to expansions but the older the game gets the more people are going to expect more content the more bungie has to do in order to please the ever-growing uh, fan base especially older players that come to expect more content oh yeah that was the almighty event that was very solid was that the first major i feel like there was an 
an event in Season of Dawn, but it wasn't as spectacular. But that was when the Almighty crashed. That was very impressive. Season of the Arrivals. I really like the season a lot. I'm tempted to put it in A tier. I just remember just farming out the um the ruinous effigy a lot. We're gonna put it in B tier again. But I remember, yeah, just running around. That was when the darkness actually arrived. And it was surprising because, you know, we've been playing Destiny for six or seven years at that point, and we had heard about the, the, the pyramids and the darkness, but that was the first time the pyramids had actually showed up. Arrivals, I feel like had a very I think the community liked arrivals a lot. And again, I'm, I'm trying to go off of a little bit of my opinion, a bit off of the community's opinion, how well it was received, and a bit off of how well did Bungie execute what they intended to do? Did they deliver on what they had promised, basically? Beyond Light. This will be a controversial one. There'll be some people that would hate this, some people that would love it. This was the pandemic expansion. So this was very much similar to Shadowkeep. They had a lot going against them. They, for the first time, had everyone working at home. And this was when they decided to scrap Destiny 3 and start basically doing that content. This is the first of that where we had Europa and the Pyramids in the Darkness actually showing up properly. Uh, Aramis, the story was very good. Europa is very good as location. Not the most replayable. Yeah, Beyond Light is just solid. I really, really do like Beyond Light. I had a lot of fun playing it, just exploring Europa. It was also the beginning of sunsetting. <laughs> and it was also when we lost a lot of content. So the thing about Beyond Light, the double-edged sword, is that, yeah, it was a very good piece of content, and it was the first kind of slice of what Bungie had been working on. Oh, yeah, Stasis as well. Stasis is a very good addition, but Crucible-wise... Uh... <laughs> Many would say it was not a good addition to Crucible. Many would say. Many. <laughs> and also the other thing about Beyond Light, it could have been the best expansion ever, but when you take out pretty much like half of the game, it's always going to leave a sour taste in people's mouths. So Beyond Light, yeah, it was good. Removing half of the game, we've come to know another over like three or four years. There is no way that one expansion would be able to replace the amount of content they removed by sunsetting and uh, content vaulting. So Beyond Light is a very, very polarizing one. Beyond Light is similar to Shadowkeep, but I'd say even more polarizing. Some people, again, would hate it. Some people would love it. But yeah, I'm going to put it in B tier. I think about mid tier. Season of the Hunt. This was similar to Season of the Undying. This launched alongside Beyond Light, where you had the laws and you'd chase Zivu's enemies. Aldrin came back with the crow. Season of the Hunt, I'm kind of leaning towards... I'm probably going to put it in C tier. Bungie has admitted that the seasons that launch alongside the expansions have never been too impressive because they put all the effort. When you got a paid expansion, the content was staggered and they didn't put too much into the actual season. So the season went very much kind of unnoticed. Season of the Chosen. I honestly like this expansion quite a lot, and this was possibly one of the best storytelling in an exp in a season. If you compare the difference between Season of the Hunt and Season of the Chosen, night and day. And again, that's how you can tell that Bungie definitely put a lot of their effort into this season as opposed to Season of the Hunt. But Season of the Chosen, I would put... I'm leaning towards A tier, but I feel like it might be a bit generous. It's definitely a B tier, at least a B. You know what? I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it in A tier. Seasons aren't supposed to have a ton of new stuff. It's supposed to add a bit of story, a couple new missions and this was possibly one of the best pacings of a season as far as the crow story yeah presage yeah i think alone would have to bring it to a tier because that is arguably as good if not better than the whisper and zero hour story wise keitel zavala the cutscenes, the way it was paced i think this was the first time yeah like compare it to season of the hunt it's night and day uh season of the splicer i did like that i did like i keep wanting to say expansion I did like that season quite a lot. Uh, replayability, it got a bit old towards the end, the override missions. Story-wise, again, with Lakshmi, Fallen, the Savathun story. Again, story-wise, they really like Bungie has been on a roll with story as far as these seasons. Like we had a very, very good year for, for the story. I, yeah, I really liked this season. I remember grinding it a lot at the beginning, and then I kind of tapered off towards the end. Probably put season of the splicer in a B tier. It was almost as good as the chosen, but not as good in my opinion season of the lost as far as story as far as loot as far as replayability again i've tapered off towards the end and now i'm just pretty much waiting for witch queen seasons like uh, opulence this was based around the activities and replayability seasons like black armory um that was based around the loot seasons like war mind that was based around the story and the secrets and the lore but these recent seasons it's all about story but season of the lost i think it'll be a solid beta you can't be the dreaming city and it's nice to have some new content in the dreaming city to actually have a reason to go back there as well especially after they uh after they 
removing most of the Forsaken content, but Season of the Lost, I've probably put it there. And the 30th anniversary event, the giant nostalgia pack. Very expensive expansion or DLC season content pack, whatever you want to call it. Very expensive. That's why it did get quite a lot of backlash and there was quite a lot of debate about whether it's worth it. This, you know, this demands a lot because it's very expensive. And that's what a lot of people weren't happy with. This was a giant Destiny 1 and Halo nostalgia pack. I honestly feel like it did live up pretty well to the hype. As far as the quality of the content and what it added to the game, this should command a lot of content considering how much it costs. And, and there's a lot of free to play players who weren't happy with this. Also, of course, if you're a Halo player, you'd have a lot more nostalgia. There'd be a lot more nostalgic value. The Loot Cave Dungeon, the Galley. I'd put it in B tier. I wouldn't go crazy and say it's like the best thing ever living up to the hype. It did have, it did have a lot to live up to. The bar was quite high. I'm leaning towards a B for that. So what do we think about this list? I think Age of Triumph deserves to be there because it was free. It's kind of crazy how like the launch of the game in these tiers, but then the expansions, the ones that came a year later, those are the real like ice on the cake, the ones that are just polished. All right, so A tier, we've got Destiny and Season of Chosen. Yeah, the highest, most recent season. And then B tier, unfortunately, Destiny 2 launches down here, but it did have a very messy launch. It'd be interesting to revisit this in a couple of years from now. We'll see how all of the future expand, all the future seasons, and then obviously Witch Queen, Lightfall, and Final Shape, how they rank up. I'm pretty happy about this list. What do you guys think? Any adjustments? Any disagreements? Look out for some more videos on the channel coming soon. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you are hitting that red button. But yeah, I'm liking this ranking. I'm liking this ranking a lot.